Welcome back to another episode of EVTV. This is your host Arden and Zoe. Recently, multiple students at EVHS went into quarantine. To learn more about this, we go to Kim. It is the second time now that students have had to go into quarantine due to positive COVID tests. The first one was before students' October break, and now a selected group of students are in quarantine. It was kind of upsetting being in quarantine, but it wasn't that bad because, I mean, I like online school better than in person because I get more things done. A shocker. Uh, it was a little bit disappointing. Um, not being able to go into school or see friends or uh, play football. and Teachers and students had to quickly adapt. In the math department, we, we've really tried to take the mentality that at any moment we could shut down the school and be teaching online. So with that mentality in mind, uh, we've been trying to do things like flip the classrooms, make lots of videos, um, train people to, to do more online, turn stuff in online. I had to adjust like not being able to leave the house and like my parents had to bring me stuff because I'm an only child. So, I mean, I didn't get to see anyone for like forever. <laughs> so that was kind of annoying. The administration worked with Eagle County Public Health to identify and contact people who needed to quarantine. So our contact tracing included figuring out what classrooms we would have to, you know, investigate and what teachers and we made a list and we started uh, working on that. So by I think it was Sunday night, um, we knew everybody that was going to end up having to be quarantined. And luckily, again, these were all B-Day students mainly. So we had Monday into Tuesday before those students would have known that they weren't to, supposed to be at school. So we had time on our side. But yeah, it took a lot. Like it takes a lot when you think about if one student goes to six classes, they'll typically interact with 50 to 70 different uh, teachers and students. The process has changed since our previous round of students and staff were quarantined. What we figured out in ours is the first time around, they wanted us to quarantine every classroom that the students were in. Just regardless, if you were just in the classroom, they considered that enough. And I guess this is an update. The one we did today, um, we were allowed to take seating charts and figure out, hey, does this student actually sit within six feet of the infected student? And did everybody wear masks? Uh, did they do any group activities? So instead of just saying you're in the room, you have to quarantine, uh, they've evolved and changed the guidelines to let us give them more feedback to actually say, you know, you're in a situation that's probably uh, where you could be infected versus you were just in the classroom. Although some students were not required to go into quarantine, some still decided to quarantine for precaution. Um, I went into quarantine even though I was not told I was not advised to go into quarantine because um, I felt like I was threatening my family's safety and their health by just going to school. Like if I did go to school and for some reason I did get COVID, I was putting my whole family at risk. Quarantining for 14 days has its challenges, but overall students and staff believe it was a smart reaction. An overreaction is going to maybe play out a little bit nicer than an underreaction. What I mean by that is uh, if we make the wrong decision, we could have instead of one or two people testing positive, it's one of these things that can blow up and you could have 100 people testing positive within a week or two. There's not enough, there's not a measurement for safety. You can never be too safe because even when we were safe enough, we were keeping our distance, we had our mask on, we were washing hand, uh, sanitizing our hands, we were still uh, got COVID. So I feel like if we didn't have symptoms for like a long time, they could have ended our quarantine a little bit sooner. But um, like spread, not spreading the virus is a good thing. In, in, in the long run, it's way better to be safe than sorry. Um, it's better to take the precautions that you need and go through a little bit of, uh, you know, discomfort or disappointment. As the second round of members of EVHS community continue their quarantine, the people who just returned from their quarantine have advice. First of all, nobody should feel guilty. I think sometimes people feel like they did something wrong. You know, you could do everything right and still end up being quarantined. So I don't want anybody to ever feel like they're, you know, a, 
you know, because when, when people have COVID somehow there's a stigma maybe that you did something wrong and that's not true. So I'd want people to know that. In order to take care of your mental health, I think having a routine and having a sense of purpose is really important. Keep a schedule. I think for me, I've realized that's how I spent most of my days being able to focus. I'd find ways to not leave the house and like just realize that you can't leave even if you want to. So like just finding things to do around the house is a lot of help. In order to minimize the spread of germs and prevent the need for future quarantines, it is important to wash your hands regularly, wear a mask that covers your nose and mouth, and practice social distancing. This has been Kim. With this month being Disability Awareness Month, it's important to learn more about it. For this, we go to Zosha and Sam. This month, the Special Education Department and the Adaptive Mentorship Program, also known as AMP, are celebrating individuals with disabilities by coordinating a school-wide Disability Awareness Month. Well, it is Disability, um, or Individuals with Disabilities Employment Month. Um, so our AMP class is a class that usually pairs um, students with disabilities with students without disabilities. So it was actually kind of my idea. I saw something posted about the month of October and just teaching the AMP class, I thought it would be a good idea to kind of maybe do it as a school-wide thing just to improve our culture with disability awareness. We came up with the idea for Disability Awareness Month um, in a pretty collaborative way. So Miss Miller, uh, Miss Macy Miller is the co-teacher for AMP and this was really a lot of her doing. Um, She's very passionate about working with people who have disabilities, yeah. and uh, she wanted to make sure that the whole school understood that there's an outlet for uh, for stuff like that through AMP. And um, I, I was totally on board with it too. And we would talk to kids about it, and we just kind of all came together and said, you know, we want to see some some school culture change and uh, advocate for. For these people that maybe you know need it most. Disability Awareness Month brings together students of all abilities to do projects and fundraisers together. Um, AMP is a class it's called AMP stands for Adaptive Mentorship Program. It's where regular students help out like uh, students with disabilities and just help them with like everyday tasks. Well the students are AMP students are the ones who are coordinating and doing everything. Um, and they're trying to get their friends and their people to, you know, take the survey, be more aware, engage in conversation and stuff like that. Faculty is usually really awesome with disability awareness, um, but our students are still trying to have those conversations with teachers. How can we include students with disabilities more? How can we have them be more seen and stuff like that? So it's really being led by the students, um, not necessarily by me and Mr. Brown. The $5 car wash, was a great opportunity to raise money for the AMP program and opportunities for students to bond. I, I heard about this fundraiser because I was driving from uh, over there by 2nd Street and I saw a sign saying $5 for a car wash. I was like, oh sweet. So I brought it in my truck getting a car wash. So that's basically how. I just like to meet other people around, mm -hmm. like in the car and and like handing out buttons and get like money for for our class. Through programming like Disability Awareness Month and AMP, Eagle Valley strives to become a more inclusive community. This has been Sam and Zosha. Thanks for watching this episode of EVTV.